Who is going to be the next Seahawks head coach? That's the question that Seahawks fans have moved on to now. And there's a little bit of information coming through in the media. So I wanted to just talk through some of the names. Mike Fisher has said that Dan Quinn wants the Seahawks job. Mike Fisher is a journalist in Dallas who's very well connected. And he is saying that Quinn wants that position. He's going to interview for other jobs. There's still a bit of talk that Jerry Jones wants to keep him around, whatever happens. But it looks as if in Dan Quinn's mind, his first focus is playoffs. His second focus is becoming the next Seahawks head coach. So we'll see how that plays out. Obviously, he, his is the name that everybody, all of the, the big name reporters have been immediately sort of connecting. But then there's been a little bit of pushback from some saying, this is going to be a process. They're going to speak to a lot of people. And it, it's not just Quinn's job necessarily to lose, even though he is going to be a strong candidate. So we all know about Dan Quinn. Ian Rappaport said that Mike McDonald is going to get uh, an interview request next week. I like that, you know, because I, I want the Seahawks to do a deep search. I want them to go and speak to all of the candidates that are sort of the hot candidates right now. And Mike McDonald has taken, as I've mentioned a few times, the Ravens, he inherited the 28th best defense in the NFL. They were the eighth best defense in his first year as coordinator. And then this year in his second year, they're first. Those are results. He's in charge of one side of the ball, which is, you know, what I think is really important to have control over one side of the ball and to have exceptional results. And that's what he's done. And the fact that he's done it in Baltimore without just a, an amazing blue chip pass rush, he doesn't have Aaron Donald blown up every play. That's how Brandon Staley parlayed a great number one defense into becoming the Chargers uh, head coach was because Aaron Donald is amazing. He's not had that. He has developed players, elevated players like Jadavian Clowney and Justin Madabike. He's gone and beaten the Niners in their own backyard. And he just seems to be a bit of a rising star. So I'm glad that the Seahawks, if, if it is true, if Ian Rappaport is correct, that they're going to go and speak to him. I think it's good and you should hear him out and you should see if he's the, the guy that you want to bring in. And I think with somebody like that, it's a young coach, not got a lot of experience, has only ever been at Baltimore or Michigan. You also need to know who you're bringing with you. Who's going to be your offensive coordinator? Here's some. Would you be willing to work with this guy? Because you know, if you don't have a name that's that attractive, we could suggest this person... You know, who's going to be your staff? How how easy are you going to find it to build a staff for such a young uh, coach? Th these are things you need to sort of hear from him as well and, and see if he can impress you in that regard. The NFL Network today suggested that it was one of Pellicer or Rappaport. They, they did a video together, I think, uh, that the Seahawks may want to speak to Ben Johnson. I hope that that may want to speak to him turns into a will speak to him because he is the candidate that I've, I've focused on the most. It's not to say that if, you know, sometimes when you sort of pick a, a preference, people think that, well, you're all in on that. But I, there's a number of candidates that I've been very open-minded about and, and would like to see in Seattle. It's just that Ben Johnson at the moment is the preference. Now, it has to be said that Adam Peters has been appointed as the GM in Washington, very good hire from the 49ers. That hurts the Niners as well, by the way, which is good news. And the talk this week from Mike Garofalo on KJR on Puck and Jim was that Adam Peters and Ben Johnson have been in negotiations, that they have kind of set themselves up as a pairing, that Peters was going to go to a team. And if he did, there's a strong chance that Ben Johnson would go with him. And it, the feeling is, amongst a lot of the reporters, that Ben Johnson's going to be the next Washington Commanders head coach. They've got new ownership. They've hit a home run, again, in my opinion, with the GM, and it sounds as if they're going to get the person who is considered by most to be the big prize in this coaching cycle. I would really like to see the Seahawks go and make a big push to go and get him. You know, I've done a lot of research on Ben Johnson. This is not somebody who I'm just sort of looking on, on Google, who are the best head coaching candidates? Oh, look, the name at the top of the list is Ben Johnson, go get him. I've watched several of his press conferences. I've read quotes from everyone from Zach Taylor to Dan Campbell to, you know, other coaches in the league saying what a great coach he is. I've studied some of what he's achieved with, with personnel. I've looked at the stats, you know, his running backs, he's got two running backs there and they've got 23 touchdowns. You know, if the Seahawks want to run a, a two-headed monster, at running back, he's shown that he can deliver a two-headed monster at running back and then some. You know, Amon Ra St. Brown, 
wasn't a first round pick. He's the third most productive receiver in the NFL behind Tyreek Hill and CeeDee Lamb under the guidance of Ben Johnson. People are always, oh, he has, he's got a great offensive line in, in Detroit. Well, get him a great offensive line in Seattle. Build that up. You know, you don't have to do it in one year either, by the way. You know, the, the idea is that somebody replaces Pete Carroll and immediately takes the team to the Super Bowl. It's it's a process now. That's it, It's almost a resetting whereby they can go and, uh, and and get the pieces needed for that person to be successful over the next sort of two off-seasons and build towards something that can be considered contending. So for me, Ben Johnson is is still the preferred candidate, but if we're being honest about it, it looks as if he's going to go to the Washington Commanders. So they're, they're, so that's what the media has been saying today. There's been other bits and pieces. So with Max Crosby coming out and saying that he may request a trade if Antonio Pierce is not named as the Raiders coach, I've never seen anything like that before. It looks as if the owner is being strong-armed into making an appointment that he may not prefer to make, uh, and he's going to end up making it, which is a real show of player power. But it does seem as if Antonio Pierce is going to be the next Raiders coach, and then there's been no connection of Jim Harbaugh to Seattle. It doesn't seem like that is a thing at all. Never expected it to be either. It, Jim Harbaugh and John Schneider working together just does not seem realistic, and the Chargers at the team today that he's been connected with. And then with the Falcons, the Falcons seem to be interviewing everybody. I think they did McDonald today. Um, Bill Belichick's name has been very highly uh, suggested for the Falcons, but then uh, there's other teams apparently in the playoffs that would be interested in, in speaking to Belichick. And he may well think, and the Cowboys were one of those, by the way, he may well think I can go to a ready-made winner rather than the Falcons who don't have a quarterback solution. So we'll see how that one plays out. But... The other names that are so there are three other names that have been linked with other teams of who, sorry who have had interview requests from other teams that I would be very interested in seeing the Seahawks speak to. Bob Slowick, I'm sat next to a TV here with a Houston Cleveland game on with the Texans leading seventeen points to fourteen, and it's the first half, so I don't want to tempt any fate for C.J. Stroud here, but this has been a tremendous offensive. Uh, performance looking at the statistics from CJ Stroud and the Texans so far and what Slowick has done with Stroud as a rookie if the Seahawks are planning on drafting a quarterback in the next maybe this year or next year how can you ignore what he's done with CJ Stroud you know this is a person who's shown I can take a rookie a, talent, a very talented rookie quarterback it has to be said you will do very well to draft someone who is as talented as CJ Stroud but if you are going to do that and you're going to put a system in place which enables them to have quick success, then Bob Slowick has clearly shown that he can do that. He's got the absolute max out of Nico Collins, who was kind of a middling receiver until now. Now he looks like a true number one. Uh, he's getting production out of Brevin Jordan, the tight end. Uh, we saw Tank Dell, you know, as a rookie, excel before his injury. So Bob Slowick is somebody, apparently he is, he, I saw Rappaport earlier saying that he's essentially this year, he's what Ben Johnson was last year. Ben Johnson was a trendy upcoming candidate. He chose not to leave Detroit and stay for another year. I wonder if Ben Bob Slowick will do the same thing. But he's somebody who should be really interesting to Seahawks fans. And I, I really hope that they will interview him because you just have to listen to him speak. Very impressive. Extremely impressive to listen to him. You can tell that he's from that. He's, he's cut from the same cloth as McShay and... McShay, McVeigh and Shanahan. Uh, I should just call them McShanahan and uh, and I've done. But they are they are very similar, the three of them, intelligent, uh, all sort of from that same DNA of that that original Mike Shanahan offense. And why wouldn't you want a bit of that? If you know the, the Seahawks need to find their version of that, or they need to find somebody who can can slow them down and Slowick to me looks like somebody who could be could be very, very good. And Kyle Shanahan raves about him as well. Raved about him when he left to join D'Amico Ryan. Said he's amazing, he's a star. D'Amico Ryan knows exactly what he's doing, taking him to be his offensive coordinator. And the fact that Kyle speaks so highly of him, I really, really hope that, as well as Ben Johnson and Mike McDonald, that they, they interview Bob Slowick. And there's no reason not to. And his dad, by the way, was in Green Bay as a coach when 
John Schneider was in Green Bay. So there may be a connection there. He may, John Schneider may know Slowick's dad, and therefore that might make for some interest. Uh, Brian Callahan is getting interview requests in Cincinnati. He's been a long time, uh, well, I say long time, he's in his late 30s, so he's still a very young coach, but he's been around the NFL for a long time, mainly because his dad's such a, a famous offensive line coach, still doing a tremendous job with the Cleveland Browns, and it would be great if he would come to work with his uh, son in Seattle and, and leave the Browns to do so because he is such a tremendous offensive line coach. But it'd be great to have Brian Callahan in for an interview. Has done a very good job working with Joe Burrow. Again, a, a rookie, helped him sort of achieve what he has. When the Jake Browning came in this year, has worked very well there. He's got history with Peyton Manning in Denver when they were getting to Super Bowls. So, and, and he's been around the league his entire life. The only problem is he doesn't call plays. So that's not always the easiest transition. You know, I do think that you probably want somebody who calls the plays uh, to uh, to come in if they're going to be an offensive coordinator who's shown they can do that. And then Mike Kafka's name is, is uh, has, there's been interview requests requests for him. He is the Giants offensive coordinator and people will go, well, why would you want him? You know, the Giants have had a stinking year, but... Uh, the Giants can have had a bad year because of the quarterback situation. The offensive line was injured and an awful. There were mitigating circumstances there. We've obviously heard what Brian Dayball was, uh, you know, having all sorts of issues with Wink Martindale and, and, and Dayball. His star has faded a little bit in the last 12 months because of reports that he's a little bit toxic. And um, last year it, it, it worked well. Now, Kafka as far as I'm aware, calls the plays in... Like, Dayball has not been calling the plays. They brought Kafka in, and I suspect that they lured him from Kansas City with the offer of calling plays because he was a very highly rated coach under Andy Reid in Kansas City. He was long considered the heir apparent to Eric Bieniemy, And when Bieniemy wasn't getting head coaching jobs and was staying in position, Kafka moved on. Then obviously a year later, the enemy moved on. So maybe with hindsight, if Kafka had just held out for another year, he would have been the, the Chiefs offensive coordinator this year. But he took the chance, went to work with Dayball, had a good year last year. This year, not as good, but very highly rated from his time at Northwestern. And the, the people at Northwestern speaking very highly of him. And uh, Andy Reid spoke very highly of him. And uh, yeah, he's from that, like he's, he's seen as a teacher, Good with quarterbacks. He played quarterback, obviously. He's he's in his 30s. Again, he's, he's not long out of the league. Uh, not the most charismatic speaker in interviews, but as long as he can, you know, neither is Cal Shanahan. So uh, I think an interesting person that it, it would be good to speak to. Uh, I know some of the Andy Reid coaches, they've not had the best success when they've actually gone on to become head coaches. So that is something. But uh, there's definitely been a lot more success with the, the uh, Sean McVeigh tree than there has been with the reed tree so i would like to see him interviewed with uh, slowick and um and callahan and then there are other sort of offensive coaches i i genuinely believe as, as much as dan quinn and it could be a big focus here and mike mcdonald i uh, schneider's background is dream bay which is offensive coaches i had a look i, I wrote this uh I wrote this article, it's on the Silk Strap blog now, go and check it out, it's quite a long piece, that, you know, the, the mentor that Schneider talks about quite a lot uh, over the years has been Ron Wolf, And, you know, I had a look at uh, who Wolf had appointed as coaches in Green Bay, and it was Mike Holmgren, offensive coach, Mike Sherman, offensive coach, and Ray Rhodes, who was a defensive coach. Now, Rhodes replaced Holmgren after all the success that he'd had, as a defensive coach, and he lasted a year. They went eight and eight, was said to have underachieved, and then he got the shepherd's crook, out you go. And Mike Sherman came in, who was an offensive coach. So, yes, Ron Wolf has appointed a defensive coach. He lasted a year. So, if Wolf is the influence there, and then if Ted Thompson is the influence there, I, I just look at Green Bay, and what is Green Bay? It's court, big name quarterback offensive-minded head coach. And if that is what John Schneider is being, you know, if, if that's his sort of DNA, then I would imagine he's going to do something similar. And I also wonder a little bit here because 
you know, it's it's very easy, isn't it? And I've done it and as well, and, and other people have done it. Just, oh, Dan Quinn he used to work in Seattle. There's familiarity there. They can carry on some of the work. Do the Seahawks want to carry on the work with Pete Carroll? I mean, it, it went wrong for the last few years. They, they weren't getting close. Like, they, this doesn't feel like a continuity thing. This feels like a, a serious, fresh start. So Quinn's appeal is not so much that he's got history with the team. It's that he has been a head coach, that he's got experience, that he might be able to put a great staff together. He's, he's obviously got a bit more experience in that regard rather than some of the Mike McDonald's and the Bob Slowicks, uh, you know, and, and maybe they feel like he's a good CEO type who can come in. The difference between Quinn and Carroll is Carroll kind of want to control everything. Quinn will just go, there's the keys, go and run the offense, which is a big thing. So they're very different people. So that, that's the point on Quinn. But I, you know, when I think of Schneider and Green Bay and Ron Wolf and Ted Thompson, it is that sort of offensive driven stuff. And I wonder if the Seahawks' you know, plan moving forward is to go draft a quarterback this year. Maybe even trade up. You know, Peter King's saying that. He thinks they're going to trade up for a quarterback. Maybe they're going to do that. Maybe that's going to be the direction of this team. Offense, offense, offense. You quarterback. Offensive-minded head coach. Complementary defense, which is what I'd like to see. That could easily be the direction. And if they appoint an offensive-minded head coach, it makes it even more likely. So I was having a look, and I kind of went through um, a list of who are the offensive coordinators in the league, who are the quarterback coaches and passing game coordinates in the league. And look, you can. You know, Holmgren was a quarterback coach, famously in San Francisco and stuff like that. You can find those guys sometimes, and um, but it was hard to look through the list and go, okay, you know, Zach Robinson's a young coach in LA and he's the passing game coordinator of the Rams. Like, uh, give him a chance. That. I kind of veered away from that and just stuck to the offensive coordinator list because I was going down. I thought nobody sort of jumps out to me. So the other coordinators, Frank Smith, he's had a bit of, a bit of a quiet one so far. I think maybe people are skeptical of how much influence he has in Miami. Is it more Mike McDaniel? You know, the Dolphins' offense has been flawed at times. How much do they rely on Tyreek Hill? If you take Tyreek Hill out, are they actually any good? I, I his he, he does not seem to be getting the buzz. Like the NFL PA put him as like the best offensive coordinator. You know. For head coaching jobs this offseason, and I'm not sure about that. Joe Brady, I, an interesting one. You know, he's not really getting much buzz, but he's gone into Buffalo. He's the interim offensive coordinator. He's done a fairly decent job. He did an outstanding job at LSU, being the offensive coordinator during that unbeaten season. His star was high, and then he went to Carolina as an offensive coordinator, went wrong. But now we know a lot about Carolina, and they're a bit of a shambles. So, do you actually blame him for that? And yes, at LSU, we had Burrow and Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson um, and Clyde Edwards-Alaire, but they, yeah, they were unbelievable. You know, he got, he got the most out of those weapons. And he's, like I said, done a good job at Buffalo. So could he be somebody that they speak to? Uh, Alex Van Pelt at Cleveland, you know, the, what Cleveland have done with their offense despite losing numerous quarterbacks despite losing multiple members of their offensive line, despite losing Nick Chubb to still be as good as they've been on offense. He's obviously got a Green Bay connection there as well. He might be somebody that they speak to. And Mike LaFleur, who's Matt LaFleur's brother, he is the uh, offensive coordinator for the Rams. You know, McVay raves about it. And although he went to be the offensive coordinator in the Jets and it didn't work out, it's the Jets, you know, and it's not worked out for the replacement either. It, it's messy over there. We've all seen that the quarterback situation with Zach Wilson is not good enough. So maybe Lafleur gets a pass for that. It's been reported that McVeigh is letting Lafleur do stuff that others in the past have not been able to do or not been allowed to do or trusted to do uh, with re with regards to sort of decision making, planning, speaking to players, managing things. So. Like I say, there's been a lot of success with the McVeigh tree and Mike's brother, Matt, has done a very good job in Green Bay and, again, could be somebody that they uh, they think of having a conversation with. So there's some thoughts. What I would say is that listening to everything as I do and reading everything as I do, I my 100% belief right now is that this is going to be a thorough search. This is not going to be... 
the anointment of Dan Quinn or anybody else that they have they they may have a shortlist in a with an order, or they may have a list of candidates where they think, well, these are the main guys, but we want to speak to these guys as well. That could all be possible. I think they're going to speak to a lot of different people. I don't think they're tied to any one individual or offensive coach or defensive coach necessarily. I think they're going to be open-minded about it. I hope they're going to go big on the top candidates. I hope they're not going to lose out on their preferred candidates to anybody. I hope when they decide who they want, they go and land them and not miss out to some of these other franchises who have not got as much to offer as Seattle has. With the facilities, the Pacific Northwest is a beautiful place to live. Uh, ownership have clearly shown that they're willing to make bold decisions, big trades, pay out big salaries, stuff like that. Um, they have, if, if you're an offensive coach, why wouldn't you want to work with DK Metcalf, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Tyler Lockett, Ken Walker, Zach Charbonnet? You've got Geno Smith, who with nothing else can play this year and and give you a you know a base level performance, which is you know what was he like the the thirteenth best quarterback by PFF? So he's not like not Zach Wilson, is he? So you know I don't know why you wouldn't want to. So if you you know if you when you've decided go and get them, that's the hope. But I think it's going to be a really interesting week. We're going to hear from John Schneider on Tuesday. I'm so excited to see who they do ask for interviews with. And I'm excited to see who comes in. And it just feels like a fresh start. You know, the things are going to be different now. Free agency is going to be different. The combine is going to be different. Because they're going to shape this team in the image of the next head coach. They're not going to be shaping it in Pete Carroll's image. So a lot could change or it could be somewhat similar, especially if Dan Quinn gets the job. We'll see. But it is an exciting time. It just, I feel rejuvenated as a Seahawks fan to sort of see what's going to happen next. And um, I think it's fascinating. And those are some of the names that uh, that I'm thinking of. And I think, you know, with Ben Johnson, Mike McDonald, Bob Slowick, Dan Quinn, uh, you know, this, this, and the other names that I mentioned, there are some really intriguing candidates. There's not like one guy like there was when Cal Shanahan was going to get the, uh, the job he wanted when he got Matt Ryan MVP. There's not that sort of one ultimate home run appointment, but there are some definitely some very interesting ones with, I think, Ben Johnson at the top. But if he goes to Washington, there are others that are appealing as well. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments section. Who are you hoping for? Who do you hope they interview? Who do you not want them to go for? Let me know what you think. Uh, give the video a like. That definitely helps. And subscribe as well so you don't miss any videos. I can tell you now we're going to do, we're aiming to do a live stream on Sunday with Adam, myself, and Robbie. So that's the plan at the minute. And I'm going to do something with Jeff, possibly on Tuesday as well. So um, lots going on on the channel, loads going on on sealstraplog.com as well. So make sure you check out the website. Enjoy the playoffs this weekend. But for now, bye.